The opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the hosts and their guests and may or may not be shared with the staff and management of this network. Ghostly Talk! The entire complement of Ghostly Talk hosts are broadcasting from the world-famous Haunted Winery here in Warren, Michigan. This is Ghostly Talk on June 14th, 2009. Ghostly Talk is independently... You keep going. Ghostly Talk is independently produced every Sunday night from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time to converse about all things paranormal. For more info, go to www.ghostlytalk.com. I wonder how this show is going to go. Tonight, Dr. Sally Rhinefeather is back to give us some updates on what is going on at the Rhine Research Center. And then later, we have a long overdue roundtable discussion with our friends from the Ghost Divas and... Parahub Radio. about tips on how to run your show. Yeah, well, that's why I just thought about it. Holy crap. Holy crap. Wow. I just totally I just totally lost my, well, no, I didn't lose my momentum. Anyways, well, here's the first tip. Okay. Yeah. Uh, always start your recorder. Always start your encoder, yeah, yeah because, well, I mean, that's going to be really fun to screw with tonight, but, you know, that, that aside... Let me make sure it's running now. Oh, God. <laughs> Dad, talk while he checks. Well, I, I do oh, find my God, I'm just right now. That, that's what happens in live radio. Yeah. So well, no, I'm the live stream's going out. Good, good. So we're cool with that. We're just going to have a shorter show now for people to download. For the download, yes. Anyway, so... Well, those of you joining on podcast... I'm here. Mid, yeah, mid, uh, mid-stream. mid Feel free to party now. Yeah, it's actually Sonic 6.20 here. p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and we yeah, missed your first 20 that's my, minutes of the cap. It's all on me. Sorry about that. See, this is the reason you need to listen to the show live. Yes, exactly. This is the reason you need to listen to the show live because you, you get everything, you know. Yes. And so. And we're not going to tell you what happened in that first 20 minutes. No, I'm not going to say it. Was all oh, no, we have to. We have to say one thing. We'll see you next weekend at the yes. Lucky yep. 13 conference in Decatur, or yep. Decatur, Decatur Ohio. Ohio. Decatur, 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 Illinois. Decatur. I don't Lucky know where 13, my mind is. We'll be there with Lugard. Yeah, yes, we're we will. Luger and us. Well, what I was saying though is, if if you do have a show you're trying to start up, or if you're you're doing a show, uh, and you're you know you want to get some pit tips, or, feel free. Send me an email. Send Doug. Send me an email. Yeah, <laughs> and, don't send Doug an email. And uh, and I'll be happy to help you out anyway. I have I actually have made like you know 
schematics and stuff of our whole setup and all yeah. this crap. So instead of like bantering back and forth on email, I can actually go here, take a look at this thing, and make mm-hmm. it make it work for you. And I've done that for a few people already. I said, here, here's here's our schematic. Here's how we we set the system up. Um, go ahead and use it. Go ahead and do what you want to do with that. Bonnie, did you go see that movie Marley and Me? No. Um, well, you know, it was a wide, widely successful book mm-hmm. and then a movie, mm-hmm. you know. I think we could actually make money if we made a movie called Luger and Me. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about right now. We don't have I to, think we and could And we don't even have to kill off Luger. If we filmed The Adventures of Blonde Bonnie and Blonde <laughs> Dove. Do you know what the costume budget would have to be for Astronomical. that? Astronomical. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, oh. Don't ask. <laughs> Luger is Luger is by far. I I think, and and we can take a vote. I'm sure, but yeah, I think it is the one among the worst women's female name. Fe- yeah, female. That's first a female's name. name yeah. Female's first we name. We found it on a headstone in a cemetery indicator. Yes. Really? Yeah. You know that cemetery that when when you're going from the hotel and conference center where you stay at the hotel to the uh, haunted Lincoln Theater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you're driving along on your right hand side, there's yeah. this little. I've seen that several yeah. times. And we popped in there. Was it last time? Uh, yeah, the yeah, last Halloween. time we were there. The, the Halloween one. We popped in there. And sure enough, and we're, we're like, we were driving out or were we about to go to the car to go out? Um. We had went separate ways because you were on the phone with Andy. I was yeah. on the phone with Tanya. <laughs> uh, it was really all weird. But yeah. You walked your way through the cemetery. I walked my way through the cemetery. And then on the way out, you said, I have to show you this. Yes. It is the absolute worst name for a woman I have ever <laughs> seen in my life. And you pulled up to the headstone and you said, read that name. And I looked at it and I went, Ooh, that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It, it's it's not a very flattering name because not at all. when I picture a Lugard, I do not picture you know like <laughs> someone a, attractive. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. I I don't picture like a twenty. I picture or something. a pit bull. I, <laughs> I do too. That's what I picture. I do too. Would you name your poodle Lugard? Um, no, I'd name it Doug. Or Fluffy, or or hmm, Doug. Wait a minute. Um. But would you name your pit bull or, or what's it? That no, I'd name my pit bull Bonnie. <laughs> okay, I'm in the wrong species. <laughs> I was going over the canines, and I think I should have went with kitty cats. Ooh. They're all named Luger. I know, I know. <laughs> Here, Luger, Luger, Luger. Um, <laughs> oh, never mind, we lost control. Hello, Luger. That's our new, like, little female dolls or whatever that people can play with that look like kitties. Hello, kitty. Hello, Lugard. Hello, uh, what else? Where, where else can we put a Lugard? I don't know. We'll figure something out. I'm going to go to Lugard's and pick up a pizza. <laughs> that would be I great. would not want to eat a I wouldn't want to eat a pizza from Lugard's either. Uh, I wouldn't want anything but it. Anybody I need a frozen Lugard. Ew. <laughs> Doug, so, think of what you're saying. That, that that would be a decent pizza chain. That's not very, that, I don't know. I don't know. I pizza? just think it would be rank. <laughs> pizza? Lugard Pizza. Well, I mean, it's obviously uh, the name Lugard kind of goes along with, the, I guess, the term loogie. Yeah. Which, you know, which that may be short. Like, ah. you know, if it's a female, right? No, wait, like, wait, if it was a female... Um, and, you know, her name was Lugard. She was, you know, Christian name Lugard, right? And they had to go short for that, um, Lugie. Yeah. Wouldn't that just suck? Or her Lug. Well, how old was her? Lou. When did she Lug. pass away? Lug, 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 Lug. That we didn't know. We, uh, we were, we were, we were, we were blind bit. with laughter. Yes, so yeah, pretty much. Way, way to respect the dead there, by the Little way. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her Lugards and whey. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I just Doug a breakfast lost. cereal. I'm a sorry bre- that I brought it up to everyone that has been forced to listen to this conversation. <laughs> yes, instead of a prize, what's gonna be great? Like, used band aid. What's gonna be great? Is the archive. The archive. I can see it right now. I'm envisioning this right now when I when I when I cut it up. People are gonna be like, "What in the heck?" Well, they're, they're gonna hear the intro stuff. Well, we and then totally blew that whole thing, right? And then we're gonna and then they're they're, they're gonna hear us talking about Luger for like five or ten minutes, and then we're gonna go to break. Mm. And it's just gonna suck. That's These, the, that Hey, well, no. Do the you know first what? Half hour is ours. If we want to talk Lugard for a half hour, that's. And okay. 
And and um, really, these people are only going to hear it for the ten minutes, the the non live listeners, because we were twenty minutes in. I have to say though, this this actually has complete and direct bearing to what we do. The name Lugard. It, one of the things that we do as, as show hosts is we go around to conferences mm-hmm. and conventions, right, and yeah. festivals. And w- this was a find at last year's, the 12th annual Haunted America Conference, right? No, it was at the Halloween Spookapalooza. Oh, Spookapalooza. Okay, okay, so even more recent then. But still, this was, you know, part of a road trip to a, a conference. Yeah. And this is the kind of thing, and if people don't get it, if they're like, oh, I don't want to go, it's like a three-hour drive or a five-hour drive or whatever, and then, then I'm staying in a hotel and then this and that, and and I don't know any of these you people who are going to be there. To it's like them. we're the same, the same way, except for when we go, we make sure that we have some kind of fun. And we ran across Luger. We always have fun. I, I know. But you know what we're going to have to do to convince them? What? We're going to have to record. Perhaps video our car trip to a Not conference. Not a good idea. And Not then us idea. the entire conference. Oh. And then people could see what they're missing. we got to get hold of Tom Smith. He's got to just follow us around like he did that one season, <laughs> ghost hunting season, because yeah. I, I don't want to record it myself, because it would look like a cheesy home video. Okay. Mm-hmm. We, could, we could try that. We've done it before. Amber has that HD camera, and... She taped the whole conversation when we were heading down to, I think it may have been Kentucky a couple of years ago, yeah. and she still has it. It's hysterical. Uh, good Jonathan. Nice yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was myself, oh, Tom. She doesn't have, on tape, does she have the, I love you, bear? No, no. Well, yeah, no, we never got that on tape. Oh, oh, we got, we got a foot. We, you know, oh, I, I hope Jonathan tape. doesn't hear this because it, it was, it, well, it wasn't anything secret. I but love you, but his wife, his <laughs> wife called him, like, you know, it was myself and Tom and, uh, and good Jonathan and Amber. And um, basically, we, his wife called him and she started yelling at him. And, and you know, she, he's like, okay, look, I'm sorry. All right. Oh, it's cool. And we're, Amber's got a camera right in his face. He's like, yeah, okay, all right. I'll take care of it when I get home. Okay, no problem. So he gets off the phone. We're like, geez the heck happened you know if we, we need to turn around and take your bag he's like no man i ate one of the fall cakes i ate the last fall cake and my wife's mad about it <laughs> and i'm like wow. and i'm like okay i go tell her i'll buy her a box you know she was i'm the, aaron's great girl don't get me wrong but uh yeah we got this whole thing this whole conversation then afterwards like 15 minutes like where the they, they, the word fall cakes comes up like like every sentence <laughs> It's like fall cake. What do you mean? She's yelling about fall cake. Oh my god, dude! But yeah, we do have a lot of video. I have to ask Amber that for that. That would be not ridiculous. nearly as entertaining as um, Doug and I playing Ick or Not Ick, which no one really wants to see. If no. you're involved, I played Ick with I played if before. If you're involved Ick in the is, game, yeah. If your name comes up in the game, you don't want to see it because yes. we're very brutal and honest. Oh, absolutely. It's and terrible. um, well, Daniel Day Lewis, Ick or Not Ick. I, I got to hear this. Daniel Day I don't Lewis. Know who he I is. can't even picture him. Daniel Day Lewis? No. Okay, how about Johnny Depp? Oh, not it. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, De- Johnny, Depp Johnny Depp is my second man crush next to Daniel Day Lewis right now. Because <laughs> I, I just saw the preview. So he's not for, a, or they're both Absolutely not. not. Right. Yeah, I just saw the previews for uh, for Public oh. Enemies, and I'm like, oh, oh I, I can't John wait. John Dillinger. You've got oh, to go God. see that. 6:30 here. Sorry, guys. If you're listening right. to the archive, deal with it. We are, <laughs> we're gonna go. We're it gonna was my mistake. Up. I did it. I, I Doctor Sally Rhinefeather coming up. Speaking about being entertained. Oh wow. Can't wait to talk to her, guys. This is Ghostly Talk. I'm Scott. And I'm Doug. And I'm Bonnie. We'll be right back with Doctor Sally. Ryan Feather after this. Ghostly <laughs> The Darker Side of the Moon is an alternative talk variety show. DarkerSideRadio.com. Since 2006, host Becky Ray and Laura Moon speak with independent filmmakers, authors, musicians, artists, and many, many more. DarkerSideRadio.com. Sometimes serious, mostly fun. The show has a little for everyone. Was it odd, freaky, and you didn't hear it on the 5 o'clock news? Then we'll probably cover it here. DarkerSideRadio.com DarkerSide currently airs live Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 7 p.m. Central and 5 p.m. Pacific. DarkerSideRadio.com if you happen to miss it, you can listen to show archives at any time online at DarkerSideRadio.com or you may subscribe to the show on iTunes. 
dive into the bizarre world of the paranormal. Do ghosts, UFOs, or the supernatural amaze you to the point of wanting to learn more? Well then, you need BVRN, the Black Vault Radio Network. With more than 1,200 hours of on-demand talk radio, syndicated for more than 35 shows, the Black Vault Radio Network is your one-stop shop for the world of the unexplained. Check us out and tune in 24 hours a day at www.blackvaultradio.com. Again, that's www.blackvaultradio.com.
As the eldest daughter of J.D. and Louisa Ryan, Sally Souther grew up in a, the world of parapsychology in Durham, North Carolina. She worked as a research assistant at the Duke Lab before and after a Bachelor of Arts from the College of Worcester and as a researcher at FRNM after a doctorate in psychology at Duke University. Dr. Feather then worked over 30 years as a clinical psychologist in mental health and psychiatric clinics and in a private practice in North Carolina and New Jersey. Since 1995, she has been active at the RRC in various uh, administrative roles, serving on two different occasions as volunteer executive director. Currently, she's working on a research grant at the uh, phenomenology of uh, on the phenomenology of spontaneous PK experiencers. In 2005, she co-authored a book, The Gift, uh, by Saint. Uh, you know, you can get that through St. Martin's yep. Press. Uh, that is an update of Louisa E. Ryan's books on spontaneous ESP experiences. Her website is, well, the website, you know, is www.rhine.org, R-H-I-N-E dot org. Mm -hmm. And we have to welcome back with great gusto and enthusiasm Dr. Sally Ryan Feather to Ghostly Talk. Welcome. Hi. Good to have you back here. It's been a very long time. And, uh... It's Obviously, you've been keeping busy <laughs> for what we can uh, see. Yes, I have, indeed. Um, I haven't retired yet, although I'm long since past retirement age. Well, I don't, you know, studying the paranormal, I, you know, I haven't really heard, well, maybe Dr. Hans Holzer. Uh, he, he seemed to have kind of, you know, after talking to Alexandra and stuff like that, uh, I think he may have retired. He's the only one I've really heard that's maybe retired. But I so highly many. doubt even his interest wanes. Yeah, you, you can't. Your, your interest. How does your interest wane? In exactly. You know, it, it, it's it's something that because we're doing, you're interested in music, you just don't stop music, right? <laughs> right, right. I, I think we're interested in you know the stuff of life here and and the stuff of death as well, but mostly the stuff of life because that's what this. Uh, uh, this studies is is what are we here for? Why are we here? How are we doing this stuff? You know, it's important stuff. You know, spontaneous ESP experiences. I want to talk really uh, not briefly, but with you about spontaneous ESP because it seems to me growing up um, uh, that 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 was pretty much mostly what I would hear. That's what actually piqued my interest in. Uh, in paranormal experiences is that you would hear, you know, friend of a friend stories or you would hear, you know, maybe maybe your grandmother would tell you a, a story that just, you know, totally rocks your world or, or an aunt or, you know, your mom's friend down the street or, you know, you hear these, these stories. I heard these stories, I should say, uh, growing up, spontaneous ESP that, that sometimes would recur a little bit, but then... Um, you know, weighing off. It is, you know, not somebody who's a psychic or, you know, bills themselves as a medium or, or a ghost hunter or anything like that. These are just normal, everyday people who have these wild experiences. And so that, that's what captures, I think, a lot of people's interest growing up. Now, you grew up, though, Dr. Reinfeather, in a completely different environment. <laughs> so how come, how come this well, piqued your interest? Well, I, I don't know that it was all that different. Um, you know, I mean, I heard the story, too, because people, of course, were very interested in them. And in fact, my mother became interested enough that she kept little notes when the children, you know, one of us, four of our children would have a little experience or something, you know, some trivial thing, but still. So she, she just paid more attention to it. But I really, I think that you and I are both very fortunate. You know, not everybody has had that experience. There may be the experiences in the neighborhood or to somebody they know, but, but then they get scared of them while they hush, hush, you know, it's something you don't talk about. I think this is just the ordinary thing of everyday life. And, but it isn't common enough unless you happen to, your mom happens to be a psychic. It isn't common enough that it happens every day. But, uh, yeah, it, for me it was just a normal, normal thing. But of course, in addition to that, I knew then, then there was the, the research that was going on in my father's lab and then so I was being called into, as a child to participate in that or and so that was an addition to just what you experienced. Well and and that's true. I can I can see that where you're you're in a other you know, other than what, you know, your the, the, the research at the lab, um, which really how much did my father's work affect me in my home life you know not much yeah, other than yeah. he would be gone and then he'd be back he'd tell a few stories but not 
You yeah. know, I, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm a master mechanic now or anything, because, you know, I, I just couldn't do that based on the stories that he was telling, because most of them were people-based stories, you know. Yeah, that's a good uh, point. I mean, I, I, my parents were, because my mother was so vitally interested, too, but in those days, as a good mother of her era, she stayed home to take care of the kids as long as we were small enough, so... She was vitally interested in what he was doing, so when he came home, then he was telling her what was happening. So it was more, much more of a family um, endeavor if you wanted to listen. Of course, you know, sometimes you didn't. You wanted your parents to just listen to what you would, wanted to talk about. Right. But basically, it was a, fa- it was a, a family topic. Mm-hmm. Oh, how so interesting. And, and that's kind of how it was in, in my household, except for there was no you know, work going on. It was just, you know, stories from down the street yeah. or stories from aunts or uncles or things like that. So, but, uh-huh. but when, when there was a story, we would all like it, we'd sit down and be wide eyed, you know, mm-hmm. hearing about the, yeah. the adventure that happened to so-and-so mm-hmm. or the street lights that were breaking whenever they were driving by or, you know, the, the different things. Yeah. How extensive do you think spontaneous PK, how does that I mean, there's a certain yeah. amount of uh, that we'll hear about. You know, you hear about friend of a friend kind of thing, or you hear about someone's direct experience. But there's going to be a huge, I think, uh, amount that we would never hear about because people just would be hush hush and not right. talk about. Well, so and, and it, yeah, and that that I think is true. That's why why we started this study several years ago because, in fact, you know, it was it really was a period of time in which people, and even still in some circles, you don't talk about ESP, mm-hmm. as I referred to before. I mean, obviously in your show, the people who listen to it yeah. uh, are not of that group, but, but a lot of the world is, as their listeners know. So they couldn't just talk about ESP. Well, my gosh, if you can't talk about an ESP experience, don't try talking about a PK experience, because <laughs> then people will really think you're over the edge. But, but that's one reason why we're, we're asking. If you ask people, well, now, have you ever had anything unusual happen, well, physical, of that nature? Uh, it's not as common. I don't think it occurs as commonly, but I think it's not reported even when it does occur. I think people are a little more, because it does open itself up to a little more, well, could it really have happened or not, and that's there were two of you that happened to be there and see it. Now, like the, when the street light goes out and you walk by, that's such an odd or, or even a frequent thing, though, in a way that, you might talk about it, but other things you might keep to yourself. Uh, but but and, and now that we're asking about it, though, we're hearing a lot more. See, the, yeah, there's a certain amount that, like for example, the streetlight um, breaking that 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 yeah. would be considered spontaneous PK, right? Yes, it, yes, that's um, right. As, as compared to the ESP type thing, right? Because ESP is more like, oh, I know who's calling. You know, pre. It's a no, it's a knowledge thing. One is like inside of you knowledge, and right. the other is something that's happening outside of you which maybe you are causing in some way. But, right. you know, at, while we're talking about this, I said there's one exception. Now that we're asking, we have two parts to this study. Now that we're focusing, we're asking people, well, at times of crisis or death, Ooh. have you, have you um, around you that's happened to somebody you know around you, then oh, what kind of physical things have you noticed? And around that topic, around death, you know, when somebody dies, there are a lot, a lot of reports. In fact, you can't ask that to a group of people without half the people in the room saying, well, you know, such and such happened, the clock stopped, or the telephone broke, or something electronic broke the day that mother died or grandpa died. Whether we notice them more because it's a crisis or whether, in fact, something else is going on, Oh, we don't know. We're just trying to get the information, mm-hmm. the data, I mean, the basic data. And that's interesting because that is the classic uh, mm. death scenario. I, I mean, is the the clock stopping, right. you know, the clock yeah. stops clock at stops. the exact moment, you know. And, yeah. and, and it's very dramatic, actually. It's a very right. dramatic and, and meaningful kind of, of thing. Yeah. And, and I can see that happening in, yeah. you know, because the universe, I think, is not only chaotic, but I also think it has some meaning. Yeah. And and that's a very deep, meaningful thing, you know, the the concept of time and clock stopping mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. death. You know, it's it just very, very... Well, and we'll look, meaningful. let's just face it, we're on, and of course your show, Ghostly Radio Show, is pertaining to, that is, there's an afterlife, and there yeah. may be something surviving that we call them ghosts. And, mm-hmm. and if that's true, then, uh, then the physical side of things becomes, it really moves our, our study a little bit more in that direction. It's an overlap between the plain old laboratory, everyday thing, happening to somebody, and something which may be representing of the afterlife, the discarnate world. And we, we're well aware of that, and that's one reason why it's 
both bringing more response from people, and, and it's more meaningful. It's more interesting in a way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When when uh, it, th- There's also a thing in, in ghost um, research called crisis apparitions. Okay, oh, absolutely. That would, that would be like absolutely. when somebody is passing away. I see those every season. day. Yeah, and then, every, then, every day. And then oh, there's well. those kind of crisis <laughs> apparitions. Those are, I'm sorry, those are drama uh, apparitions. <laughs> Those are drama apparitions. But but do you think maybe goes to a retarded person? <laughs> <laughs> I get those at the store. No no no. The um, do, what about like times of stress? Because stress really changes your body and your body chemistry. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, they say stress kills. They say stress. Mm-hmm. At least I know for a fact that stress uh, makes me break out and I get um. Uh, scaly, dry skin on my knuckles. So mm-hmm. I, I get a physical reaction from too much stress. And I'm wondering, it, uh, do you know of people who say, well, it, it was a, like, do they preface their story with it was a very stressful time or, or all yeah. these things were going on and then this mm-hmm. happened and it's the last thing I needed? <laughs> or what, you know, I yeah, mean, yeah. It does, do, absolutely. Also... It, it, uh, if, if there's not, if they don't you know, move back away from the whole topic of death itself, but just crisis. That's how we first really started into this because there were enough other people on it. Well, that was a famous physicist in our field. He's uh, Evan Walker. He's not living now. But he, he gave me the anecdote that one day he was very, very angry at his cat, of all things. No, this wasn't, you know, a world-shaking crisis, but he was very right. upset with this, with this cat because I don't know what it was doing, you know. And while he was upset in the other room, uh, his wife was taking some little glass of Coke bottles out of the refrigerator, and one of them spontaneously broke. Ooh. Now, he made the connection that his anger in one room, somehow that energy affected uh, you know, an object that could break in the next room. Now, mm-hmm. and, and he was a physicist, so you know, I, that, that big, uh, was one of our first stories, and we've had many, many, many like this. Yeah, and I, I absolutely believe that because I, I think that, you know, it obviously – Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. That's one of the things that that, that is quoted on and on and on in, in ghost research. And, yeah. of course, in, in psychokinesis, in PK, yeah. you know, you're, you're dealing with, obviously, it would take a lot of energy. It would take something and, 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 a, and a stress factor or whatever. And I don't know if you've ever tried to hit, you know, a, a, a Coke bottle. Like you're, you're talking about, like, the glass kind. If If you tried to hit that... If you hit it with like a hammer, that might have enough force to instantly shatter it. But if you if you just you know dropped it, I would yeah. say maybe thirty five percent of the time it would break due to the impact. But there's other times when it doesn't hit the ground quite right, or it lands on carpeting, and and it's still a forceful thing, but yeah. not enough to actually hit that stress factor before it actually shatters. So there's there's certain uh, rules that come into play, physical physics kinds of rules that come into play with shattering of glass or breaking of light bulbs or, you know, that kind of thing that, that have to be met before it would do it, unless you're talking about something else, like something else, you know? yeah, uh-huh. Some kind of focused energy that is unintentional <laughs> uh, and, and unwanted in you know, all these cases. You know, but if, if you know, if you... You know the literature on poltergeists. Oh yeah. Um, you know, then what we're really talking about, and that this is nothing that got us started. Uh, I began to think because uh, I've had enough statistics to know that if something happens in one place, it's probably like a normal curve. And in other words, it's not just going to happen to one person at one time. One, it, it's probably happening to other people, but maybe not as often. And so that they don't think of themselves as a poltergeist agent. They're kind of on the edge of the normal curve, but something happens to them. And it, and as with what they know about poltergeists, or they think, they don't know it, right. that it's the result, you know, of one person's energy, kind of repressed, angry energy, bursting out in strange ways. Well, so just what we've been talking about is, is the same kind of thing, only we, it, I just think it's the tail end of the poltergeist phenomena, or it could be. Uh, Interesting, because some of it could be. I mean, because you could have that kind of. I mean, I, I know that parapsychologists think that there's a lot of stuff that that we can do that we haven't even touched on. You know, a, a lot of you know, there's PK, ESP, all that stuff. Yeah. That we humans were wired to be able to do, but just like I, I if I sat down and tried to play the piano you guys would all run from the room because I'm just not an experienced piano player. Am I physically capable of it? Yes. Yeah. Do I do did I take the time to learn it and be able to do it, you know, no. beautifully? No, I didn't. Yeah, right, right. And that's why you have everything's called a discipline. 
because, you know, a lot of, like the piano, for example, that isn't something you just pick up overnight. Right, right. It's something you have to spend a lot of times years but I could, working on. But I could plunk out chopsticks if I had to. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. or something, or happy birthday after a little, twi- you know, twinkling of the ivories, but I, I just couldn't, um, you know, sit down and play, a, you know, like a virtuoso. Yeah. So, right, but what is the limits of our consciousness? We're really right. talking about con- human consciousness. Yes. That's a better word if, that we're studying this than the old-fashioned word parapsychology, which we don't really like. But uh, we're really talking about extending and studying human consciousness in ways that traditional science isn't yet paying attention to, uh, as they should. Exactly. We, we think this is all part of the normal world, even though it's weird and we don't understand it. But that doesn't make it abnormal or supernormal. And it's interesting because I do know of stories about PK and ESP. I mean, I, I know that mm-hmm. the, the actual book, The Gift, you know, was about the, mm-hmm. you know, the ESP, the spontaneous ESP, and, and of course now you're studying spontaneous PK. It, it's the, uh, do you think there's any relation or correlation to it? Well, that was one of the questions we asked the people. Uh, we, we've done some intensive interviews of people that seem to have a frequent PK experience because mm-hmm. we want to know more about them. Who are they? Are they different from... The other group, that's what, you know, and we're fine, there's not much difference. They, almost every, I only had one person who didn't have a lot of ESP experiences as well. So we're probably talking about people with similar characteristics um, in, at just different times in their life. Like one woman said, well, I used to have a lot of, you know, PK experiences back when I was younger, but now I've got my emotions under a little better control or whatever, mm-hmm. and it doesn't take that form anymore. <laughs> but yeah. she has ESP experiences still. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, if, I want to jam on this for just one second, though, because you got you got me. My I brain, know that's the thing is I, I'm. Well, you got my brain going on this thing, and just, just get, I, I know I just kind of ran in and ran out and just took over again, like I always that's do. Fine, I apologize. That's fine. But no, I gotta add. I it's just a, a thought, a trip for a second because we were talking about you know the piano, for example, yeah. a few minutes ago, uh, and everybody has a discipline. You know, it could be computers, it could be you know. Construction. I mean, you know, that's as far as making a living is concerned. But some people have hobbies, like they play the piano. Uh, you know, they may play an instrument. They may collect stamps. You know, they have all this information about stamps in their head or coins. Mm-hmm. They have all this information about coins in their head. I don't have that much information about coins in my head because I don't collect coins. <laughs> right, right. My point is, is we have the potential. And, well, let's just go directly over to, you know, PK, for example. We've been told, and I, we, for the last seven and a half years, I've been told by a lot of people on this show that, okay, you have the power. You have the power to do this thing, right? And, mm-hmm. Grant, I've tried. Maybe not tried as hard as I should have, mm-hmm. but I've tried, right? My question is, with the mind, mm-hmm. Here's, let me just let me make it even more clear. Yesterday, I was surfing the Internet. I've never done that before. No, I'm ah. surfing the Internet. <laughs> and I stumbled upon like, Google videos. It's always a lot of fun. They always oh, have these yeah. like, really cool like documentaries on there that you can yes, watch on the web. Yes, it's sweet. Do. And I go through this thing, and I'm like, Carl Sagan, Stephen Hawking, blah, 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 just down the line. I'm like, my God, there's so much cool stuff on here. I want, I want it all. I want to watch it all and take it all in. Now, that takes us to what we're talking about kind of here, I think, where the mind itself. I want to learn how to fence. <laughs> right? I want to be a... That's what fencing sounds yes, like. <laughs> that's what fencing sounds like, I guess. That'll but be interesting I, to watch on the Olympics. A couple Olympics of cats fighting, it sounds like. Yeah. Anyway, so, I want to learn how to fence. Isn't it, wouldn't there be, this is just what I'm tripping on, is like, if we have the power to learn things like that, mm-hmm. but right. we can't do it. We have to, like, for example, I mean, I'm doing, I do that training I was bragging about last week, all my training. Yeah. Two and a half months I spent on this thing, training right? Training for that test, yeah. Why couldn't I just find, we got to find a machine or something, we got to figure it out so we can just walk into a room and go, okay, here's my 20 bucks. Slide in the thing. Download the knowledge. Download the knowledge to my yeah. brain so I can, and I can just... Brain, yeah. You know, Watch now... Computer. Well, actually, um, Dr. Einfather, that that is an interesting thing because... You follow what I'm there saying. There are okay. other things, and, and this is quasi-related to... It's not so much related to PK as much as ESP, in that, that one of the theories is that we're all plugged into a cosmic consciousness of some kind, and, and, yeah. and that everybody is related to everything. Like, my atoms are no different than your atoms, and... And there's quarks and little energy units in them that can instantly communicate in some, you know, unseen language. Why wouldn't we be able to, if we wanted to, yeah. or, or or did a ritual or did a, you know, whatever it took, to uh, instantly master our PK or ESP experiences? 
well, you know, you still have to give credit to the brain. I mean, I, I don't believe everything is reduced to the brain by any means. I, that's, you know, the, the difference between us and conventional science. Maybe we think that there's much, much more, but still, the brain was very important in learning how to play the piano, and a lot of work went yeah. into that. Yeah. And I bet doubt that they'll maybe someday they'll get smart enough they can bypass, go to the basics. And then I also think there's that there's proclivities or or, or sense. Your tendency, uh, like we think people who are psychic, we think more and more that there are people that are, are really different from, in many ways, and neurologically, or, or from other people in that they are more open, they're, 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 the pathways are more susceptible, yeah. more sensitive, like musicians. Mm -hmm. But many musicians are just quite different brains. Many artists are than I am. I'm kind of left brain, and I, mm -hmm. I don't think all the training in the world, and I'm going to become a really good psychic, could probably become a better one. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so well, I, I think you have to start with something, and you have to give credit to some basic things. We can't get completely away from the material, physical, physiological world. And, and then you can go on and maybe hope that you can develop some things. Well, yeah, and there's a, there are those constraints. And, I mean, just going further with that, just, just in a, you know, to go, if, let's just say, for example, there was we did have that ability and we mastered that where we could, okay, I want to learn how to – Drive a sailboat today, right? I go to the, I go to the thing and download the sailboat, download the program. sailboat program. How yeah. sucky would that be for all of us, though? Because there would no, there would be no, there'd be no like challenge. There'd be no challenge. There'd be no yeah. reward. There'd be no discipline. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I mean, would suck. while it'd be but cool, I'm, it would kind of suck at the same time. I'm way. unsure if it's related more to that kind of thing as much as like, do, do you know there's? Oh, and I know we've got to go to break in oh, like point oh two minutes, right? <laughs> but um, but the, the, that's the thing, Doctor Seller, right, Father? We get on the on the phone with you and. <laughs> <laughs> I just get so interested in everything. One you call me Sally. That'll shorten your time. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we go, <laughs> but we go to we. It, it may Efficient. not be related to that kind of thing so much, at, you know, the the instant knowledge kind of thing. Yeah. As related to more like. Um, you hear stories about every so often maybe a, a, a child is running out into the street or something and, and a car is, is, is rolling and going to crush it. So the mother or, so, or some concerned citizen gets an adrenaline rush of some kind and is, is able yeah, to lift yeah. the car so that yeah. it does not crush the child. You know, I mean, it, it's within that. It, as a human being, she has she or he has limits, obviously, but those limits seem to be overcome in, in times of crisis, in a time of yep, crisis, yep. or in in the time of need, and perhaps that's more like what's going on with spontaneous PK. And mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it's a theory. It's we, like a little spurt here now and then of something breaking through or coming through. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and that's that's very very spontaneous. Whereas learning a piano, if you learn it, then you would know it, you know. Forever, you would get you know rusty, but you would always know the the basics. So it's much more like learning the piano, but then to be creative and create your own music, you might have to stop and go into an altered state, yes. and then the music, the new creative piece, comes to your mind or something. That that it's would true. be true, because how you know if if you're good at writing music, you may not even know how to play the piano, or vice versa. I mean, who knows? Yeah. But we do have to go to break, and yeah, let's you do guys that. on our breaks, of course, we play um, uh, independent music. And I want people to listen to some independent music and get all indie on our breaks. And uh, we'll be back with more from uh, Dr. Sally Rhinefeather at www.rhine.org after this wonderful indie music. For more info, visit ghostlytalk.com. <laughs> 